Hello everybody and welcome back. And in the previous tutorial we covered some of the basic networking terms which you will need to know in order to follow up with this course. Now those were just some of the basic terms, not really widely explained. If you want to know more about some of those terms that I covered in the previous video, you can always google any of them and just learn more about them. But in this video we will cover some of the hacking terms that you need to know in order to better understand what we will be doing in the next lectures. So I will just write you, I will open leafpad which is basically something like notepad just in Linux and here I will write one by one the terms that we cover. So now the first hacking term which is also a beginning process in ethical hacking is called footprinting. Now you might be asking now what is footprinting? Well basically it is just the same as it says it is. It's just uh, getting as many information about for example a company as you can before you attack them. Now let's say a client asks you to test his company or his yes his company website and you want to uh, you want to get as much information as you can. Now one of the most common methods for doing that would probably be Google hacking, which is basically just opening Google and searching for files or, f or anything that is uploaded on the internet, which may help you in further attacks. There is also uh, a website called Shodan, and uh, it is basically used to discover vulnerable devices on the internet. You can use that in order to check if any of those devices that belong to the company is vulnerable to any of the known attacks. Now, we will cover all of those tools, uh, don't worry, we will cover them one by one in detail and you will know better what am I talking about. But also there is one more tool, which is, I don't, I don't think it is that known, but it is called Harvester. I'm not sure we have it installed in the Kali Linux, we might have, if we don't we will install it. Uh, Harvester is basically used for uh, gathering the emails for a certain domain. For example, you want to gather all of the emails that uh, belong to Apple company, for example. You just type the domain name and the harvester will basically automatically uh, go over the Google and there are a bunch of other options that I will show you, but um, plainly it will go over the Google and search for all the emails available that, that belong to that domain. So you will basically get a list of all the emails that belong to a certain company that you are attacking. Now that is basically footprinting, so we will cover that firstly in the one of the next lectures. Once you finish footprinting, there comes the next thing, the next process in the process of ethical hacking, which is scanning and enumeration. So I will just write that out right here, scanning and enumeration. Now footprinting basically gets you the information without actually testing or without actually attacking the company itself or the website or whatever it is you are testing. Now scanning basically does as it says, it is just scanning the company network, for example in order to discover what versions of software they're running, what ports they have open, what operating system are they running on their machines and more and more. Now you might have heard for this program, you probably have if you have any ethical hacking knowledge from before, it is called Nmap. Let me just type here Nmap. This is the program that we will cover in details. It is basically used to scan uh, a network. You can use it to scan a website or and a range of IP addresses if you want to. You can discover with it what ports are open on the certain website or on a certain machine or on more machines. You can also discover what operating system it has. Uh, it basically just prints you out with bunch of operating systems and it shows the possibility of having that operating system in percentage. It is most likely accurate, but there are times when it just gives you a wrong operating system, but those I didn't have that much. Now also what Nmap can do is discover the version of software running on an open port. 
So for example, you have an HTTP port open and you're running a website, you, the Nmap, ver the NMAP uh, has the ability to discover, for example, what web server are you running on that port. So it might print out Apache 2 or anything else that you're running there, which basically just gives out the banner in order for us to grab it and find out what version you're running. Now, as I said, we will cover all of that in the details. For now on, you just need to know theoretically what it basically does, and uh, we will cover it practically later on. Now, the next thing you also need to know is system hacking. This is a very important part because this is actually the part where we discover a way to enter the machine, for example. Now, system hacking is usually done with backdoors. Backdoor is a program that you run on a victim PC and it basically gives you the full access to that PC without the victim knowing that. Now, backdoors usually have some of the options such as being able to execute commands on the victim's PC, being able to access the microphone, the web camera, being able to screenshot the screen, being able to upload, download files, change files, and for example, upload a keylogger which will give us back a keystrokes that the victim is typing in, in their, on their keyboard. Basically, backdoors are detectable, the ones we will cover in the intermediate section, can be detected because they are mostly widely used by every ethical hacker ever. So in the advanced section, we will code our own backdoors that will be fully undetectable by any antivirus available. Now, now that we covered system hacking, we can go on onto the malware. Now, you most likely know what malware is, but basically malware is a malicious program. Now, by malicious, I mean it can be any program that does damage to your PC, for example. Let's say you make a program, a simple program that just creates files in an infinite loop. So basically it creates infinite files. Now, that program will most likely make your PC crash before you get to close it. So, it is basically a version of a malware since it makes your PC crash and it doesn't do any good. Now, most known terms for malware are worms, trojans and viruses. We'll be also coding some of the malware but we are not really interested in that for now since those programs really don't have any use except to destroy someone's machine, so we won't be covering that much of malware, but we will surely go over it. Now, the next thing you want to know is what is sniffing. Whoops, sniff, sniffing, sorry I can't type at the moment. Well basically sniffing is um, an action where you as it says, sniff someone else's packets. Now, you shouldn't be doing that, but in some cases, in some ethical hacking projects, you might need to do that in order to gather some of the information. For example, a password can be hacked through sniffing. For example, on a local network, if you run a man-in-the-middle attack and you sniff other's packets, if someone logs in to, to a website that isn't HTTPS, you will see their password in plain text. Now the tool that you most likely will use for sniffing is called Wireshark. It is a widely known tool and it is used to just basically go over the packets that are going through your network interface card. So now that we covered what sniffing is, we can go to social engineering. Now this is something very important as it is most likely to get you into a company or any other machine or basically to hack anything you want to since in the social engineering attacks you don't really attack the machine itself uh, as much as you attack the person. So for example I always say why would you hack a Wi-Fi from a restaurant for example if you can just ask someone what is the Wi-Fi password. Now it is a simple simple use of social engineering, for example, not really that good one, but it is an example. So social engineering basically means attacking people. Now, what do I mean by attacking people? Well, let's say, for example, I make a backdoor. I code a backdoor. 
Now, what are the chances of someone opening an executable file that looks suspicious? Well, not big chances, but if you, for example, change the icon of that file to be a picture, and you change the name of that file to be a dot J, uh, .jpg or png, the, the chances of someone opening that file increase drastically. So let's say, for example, you know something about the person that you want to hack and you just send them a fake email from someone they know and in that email you send basically that picture which is uh, a hidden backdoor and they open the picture and the backdoor just installs itself deeply in the system without them even knowing that. That is basically what social engineering is. It is a method of attacking people and not the machine. Now, now that we covered that, we can go on to the next step, which is denial of service. Now, denial of service is basically what it says. It just it is used to crash someone's website or machine. So basically, you just send a lot of packets which the website cannot handle, and basically it just crashes and nobody else is able to connect to it anymore. Now. In order to perform denial of, denial of service attacks, you will need a bunch of PCs in order to be able to crash anything. So you can perform a denial of service attack with one PC. You won't be crashing anything because there are not enough packets that can be sent in order to crash a website, for example. But if you make a command and control center, for example, and send a bunch of backdoors to a bunch of PCs, and they all run the same command at the same time which is sending packets to the website, they will be able to crash it. Now, depending on the website, some of them are easier to crash and some of them are harder to crash, but you get the basic idea. Now, we will cover SQL and XSS cross-site scripting. Let me just find this. XSS, I'll just type it like here. Well, basically, here we exploit the username input, not the username, but any input. For example, the basic example of a SQL injection would be, let's say you have an online shop and someone didn't filter out the requests that you put in the search bar well enough. So if you type here a code, for example, it will be read website as a part of their website code. So you'll be running code on their website and you should not be able to do that. Now, these attacks are only available because of the poor programming of their website. They didn't program it well enough. They didn't filter out the user input. So that is SQL. Now we will cover also Wi-Fi hacking in detail. Now there are bunch of methods to attack Wi-Fi with the CPU, GPU, whatever you want. Uh, now, most of the courses that I saw do not even cover the attacking of Wi-Fi with GPU. I don't know why, because, well, basically, the most common method is with aircrack program, which hacks or not hacks, which tries to break the password of Wi-Fi with the CPU. Now, the power of the CPU is fast, but the power of the your graphics card will be much, much better in, for hacking Wi-Fi. Because when you hack Wi-Fi, you basically uh, get the hashed password and you don't know, you don't see it in plain text and you need the power of a CPU or power of your graphics card in order to crack that password hash. And much faster method is to crack with your graphics card. We will also cover the attacking of Wi-Fi on an enterprise wireless, which will basically use to make a fake login page where someone will enter their password for the wireless. We can also make an evil twin, which is basically a method where you uh, reproduce uh, the exact the exact same wireless hotspot and with enough signal. Uh, available to the victims, you can make them connect to your wireless instead of their wireless, their real wireless. So basically, you just authenticate everyone from the real wireless and they will automatically connect back to your wireless. 
and therefore you can watch all of the data that is going through and also if they need to log in in order to use the wireless you will capture their password. Now we will also cover mobile hacking. Now mostly mobile hacking we will cover the Android attacks because there are more Androids than iOS but we will also cover some of the Apple attacks where for example let's say you make an application which looks like a legit application and you install it on someone's mobile phone you will be able to access all of their messages calls send messages watch files pictures download upload and do all of that without them knowing it now how we do that well basically we need to create something like a backdoor just for the android device for example and the problem with this method is that uh, they need to click on uh, a certain part which can be suspicious I will show you when we get to that but we will try to make that as less suspicious as we can now there is also one more thing we need to cover which is cryptography well you probably know what cryptography is but that is basically a method of protecting your information now for example you have a password password hashes now they are hashed for a reason so some of the attacks such as sniffing can be used to see the password and steal it. You can sniff the password but it won't be in the plain text, it will be encrypted and you will need to decrypt it and if the password is uh, big and uses uh, numbers, letters, symbols and all of that it will be very hard for the attacker to decrypt your password. Now cryptography is used so that only the use of codes it basically uses coding so that only those for whom the information is intended can read and process it and nobody else can. We will cover some of the basic cryptography methods but we will only touch it a little bit since cryptography is a course itself it has a lot of stuff to it and we won't be able to cover all of that but we will just barely touch it in order for you to understand what that is. So uh, that's about it for these basic terms. Now, as well as the networking terms, you can, if you want to, search these more, search more about these online and read about them. But we will cover all of them theoretically and practically later on in the intermediate, in the intermediate section. And basically, we will code some of our own tools in the advanced section. The footprinting part we will cover now in the beginner section. I will show you Google hacking the Shodan uh, website and the harvester in order to get emails. And until then, uh, I hope I I hope you have a great day, and uh, I will see you later. Bye.